Hello everyone, my name is Sonny Orange, and today we're going to be talking about Superman and Lois Season 2, Episode 2. So remember what happened last episode, sons had sex with their girlfriends, and their mother, and his mother came in. Superman had headaches. And we got the reveal of Doomsday's arm, so yeah, he's coming. Anyway, we start off this episode with Lois cooking in the kitchen, cooking a whole bunch of, just cooking up a whole feast, and... Jordan and Jonathan and Clark come down and just like, what the heck is up with the feast? And yes, the eggs are over easy and over, or, I mean, scrambled. Uh, Lois tells him to wait for John and Natalie. So, yeah. So then Natalie comes in and she's like, well, like, yeah. Clark asks, did you sleep well? She said, well, uh, <laughs> at least we have a bed. Yeah, so the chickens are very loud, so. Yeah, she, yeah, you know. John says you didn't have to cook up this whole feast for us, Lois, but she insists. She tells Natalie that they have toast, eggs, um, bacon, sausage, and Natalie actually says that she's vegan and not a breakfast person. So, uh, no point for Lois. That's when Clark gets up to go put his cup in the sink, I guess, or maybe get a refill. Anyway, he starts getting the headaches, and... He stops mid-sentence because he was talking to the boys, and he falls to the ground. Everybody starts freaking out. They're just like, Dad, are you okay? And he does get up. The headaches stop, and Lois finally asks, what's going on with you? And John actually says, well, since you're not up to it, I'll be taking the kids to school. And Clark's just like, nah, no, I can't do that to you. But, you know, John insists, since it's Natalie's first day at school... Yeah, so Lois, like, I, I wish there was somebody we could talk to to maybe help you. And Clark says, I have someone in mind. So that's when we get our first shot of Lana and Kyle in the episode. And they're delivering some new merch for Henry. That's when they run into the old mayor. And he's pretty much just acting like an asshole. So, yeah. And... You know, they're just very... He's just taunting them, and... Yeah, you know, the whole thing. That's when we move over to the high school. Jonathan, he's kissing his girlfriend and everything. He's just making out, you know, doing little stuff and stuff. Anyway, uh, this other kid, he goes up to him. I mean, I completely forgot his name. But it doesn't matter, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Anyway, he says, you better save your strength for the weight room. Jonathan, he's like, oh, you, because you can't even bend that, you know, bench that much. But he says, I got a new regimen, so just wait. That's when Jordan, he goes, Sarah, yes, sir, if she wants to go to lunch with him. And Sarah says, yes. So then they go to lunch. Jordan's trying to make a little small talk. And Sarah's actually working on her homework. Yeah, she's not really listening, so. They call over Natalie. And Natalie just asks for a new, where her class is. They give her directions. And that's when Natalie sees that she... That Sarah's trying to work on her dad's new car, get her some good advice, and yeah, we can see how smart she is. So we move over to the Gazette, hope she's listening to a podcast, and apparently Lois is on that podcast. She finally comes in, and Hope asks her the question, did you ever use any illegal source? Apparently it's for some cult. Yeah, a cult, and she busted them, but they don't know she used an illegal source, and Hope... Hope, you know, she's like, ask Lois, did you? Hope says, it was not an illegal sources. I went, I did everything by the book. Hope's like, I hope so, because, you know, this Gazette just can't handle it anymore. We don't need any more, you know, dangers on our back. And Lois is like, okay. And, you know, she's not telling the full truth, so. But we finally go to the base, and we get to meet our old friend Morgan. So that's when Clark asked the question, have you been getting headaches or anything like that? Morgan says, well, I've been getting headaches mostly because I have a whole bunch of Kryptonians in my head. And and Clark ends up asking Morgan if, you know, he could help him with the whole headache thing and where he might get it. Morgan says, okay, but you have to let me out first. I'll have to show you to my fortress yeah, they gotta go to the fortress. Clark, of course, disagrees with this, but then Morgan says he's completely powerless because of Sorla Flair, and yeah. 
So Quark is pretty reluctant in this, but you know he's gonna have to agree. So that's when we move into Lois and they and Hope, and they're investigating this person right here. It's the head construction worker, basically. And they pretty much tell her that there's leftovers of the kryptonite that Morgan used to give people's powers. Uh, she says she knows that, and basically they're doing a public service for them. But they still tell her it's very dangerous. And, you know, the tremors and everything, the earthquakes. and But she, you know, she's like, we have it all under control. And if we find anything, you guys will be the first ones I call. So, then we finally pick up with Lana and Kyle. They're basically, they basically set up this whole diner and Daniel finally comes in and he's just like, uh, he tells Lana that he's dropping out of the race. Lana's just like, you know, we're so close. Sorry for the noise in the background. We're so close. You can't just give up right now. But Daniel says that it's been really tough on his family and he just wants to go, you know, they're going to move. So, yeah, Lana's going to have to find a new person to campaign against the old mayor. Anyway, Jordan, Jordan finally meets up with Sarah again, and he asks her, "Can we? are we going to go to the diner like we said we would? And Sarah actually says that her and Natalie are going to go work on her dad's car. Natalie says Jordan could join, but Jordan's like, that's just not my thing, so, yeah. Yeah, so Jordan, he's just like, yeah, I'm just going to leave. After that, we meet up with John. He's picking up his picture, reminiscing over his old wife, his dead wife. And that's when Lois comes in, and she's just like, you can stay here as long as you need, you know. And John just says he's trying to make this room homey for her, uh, Natalie. And that's when Lois asks her favor, and John's just like, I'm retired. Yeah, you know, he's not helping with the kryptonite stuff. But Lois says, you know, this may explain all the earthquakes happening and everything, so could you help? John reluctantly agrees, so, yeah. Yeah, so, Lois says yes, and that's when Clark comes in. And Clark actually, Lois actually asks Clark, uh, did you ever get the help you needed? Clark says no. Because Morgan wouldn't actually comply with him unless he let him out. So Lois is like, ah, oh, man. That's when Clark overhears some guy at a shootout. He's trying to kill people, so... Yeah, he's got a gun and everything, so he rushes right through them. And Lois is just like, uh, what about practice? Clark says, uh, I don't have time, so just tell Coach I'm going to be late. So, yeah, Clark flies right into the guy and he pushes him so the guy's down and it looks like it's over until he's some of that kryptonite and he gets his superpowers he punches him right into the truck and boom yeah so clark is actually on the ground and then he starts having his headaches again so he's just completely stunned so we can see in the blurry background that the two super people that were from last episode came in and they stopped them and we got the reveal of Tag. He asked if he, Clark was okay. So Clark goes back to the old army base. And Clark. So Anderson asks what's wrong with Clark. Clark says he's been getting these headaches. And, you know, Anderson's like, I can't have my. I just can't have you, you know, going out of control. Like, from now on. From now on, you cannot bother with any of our missions. And, yeah. Clark just says, well, I saw someone in danger. I heard someone in danger, so, you know, I wanted to save them. But Anderson tells him that, Anderson tells him that you're completely on your own now. Since you didn't want to be on my team, you're on your own. And, yeah, he's like, I'm not going to help you, so you better find someone else. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. So then Clark also asks about Tag, and he's like, he's only 16. To which Anderson replies with, well, yeah, he's pretty fast, isn't he? So That's when we were to Lois, and her and John are trying to fix something, and John actually 
starts having a memory of its wife, as you can see in the image. And Lois walks up to me, he's like, did you just have this, like, earthquake thermometer or whatever out, like, in your truck? And John just says it's the same thing I use in my suit, so... Lois is like, okay, so what does it do? John just said it's going to check the vibrations, and if he picks up a high one, then we'll know. Anyway, we meet up with Kyle, and Lana's actually trying to jot down people to run against the mayor. They can't actually come up with one because all the people on the list either have families that they don't want to take away time from, or they just aren't liked, so, yeah. Kyle's just like, yeah, we'll figure something out. And don't worry. So that's when we move over to Jordan. And I think his name is Pete. If I'm not mistaken. I think his name is Pete. Anyway, he starts lifting weights. And it's like massive. I mean, like, these are incredible weights. And John just looks, Jonathan just looks over. And he's like, he's like dead lifting this massive weight. And Jonathan's obviously jealous. That's when we move over with Jordan. He's texting Sarah, asking where she's at. I mean, dang, man. But then again, she is leaving him. You know, she's ghosting him for right now, so I, I can kind of agree with this. Anyway, Clark tells him that he needs to go to Morgan's. He needs to go to Morgan's, uh, what was it? <laughs> lair. Yeah, I'll just call it Lair. Fortress of Solitude, and, you know, he's just going to go alone. Jordan actually asked if he could go because he doesn't feel very useful right now because he has pretty much nothing to do at this moment. Clark obviously disagrees, but Jordan insists so, you know, so he can protect his dad, you know, have his back. So, yeah. Clark agrees, and he says, okay, fine. So we're finally at Morgan's uh, Fortress of Solitude, and and he actually says that his is better than... Clark's and Jordan's like, eh, I think that's it's better. So the person they have to talk to is Clark's mom. And Clark's mom, she's like, so she's like, oh, my big boy, he's gotten so big. And Clark tells Jordan that this is his real grandmother. Not real grandma, he never used that word, but this is his grandmother. Yeah, and she's just really so happy to see Clark. She asks who Morgan is, and Morgan's like, I'm your son. And, you know, he gets all angry about it, and, yeah, so, yeah, and, uh, apparently she did not know. Anyway, we move over to Natalie and Sarah, and they're trying to work on the car. Natalie does figure it out, and she asks Sarah about Jordan and why he's, and why she's avoiding him. And she's like, whatever you have to tell him, just tell him now. Sarah's just like, I'm not hiding anything, and... Now it looks like you are, so just tell him, just tell him, you know. So we move over to John and Lois, and they're talking about it. They're just talking, and John's just like, you know, I'm just trying to, I'm not trying to do any of this anymore, and, you know. Lois is like, how are you settling in? And John, he's like, I'm settling in good, you know. And Lois actually asks, uh, how do I get on Natalie's good side? John's just like, be yourself, you know. She's able to tell if somebody's being fake. So uh, Lois takes that advice. And she's like, thanks. Anyway, we move over to Morgan. And Clark's actually going over to his mom. His mom's going to read his mind and find out what's going on. And Morgan's just like, why doesn't she like me? Why doesn't she like me? You know, why didn't she respect my plan? And Jordan's like, well, maybe because you're a genocide, you're a genocide maniac. <laughs> so Clark starts getting the headache again. He falls to the floor and he's pretty much incapacitated. That's when Morgan finally takes his chance to take off the handcuffs and Jordan's just left there. So then they start having the earthquakes again. So, yeah. And Jordan's just there and he's just like, uh... Well, I guess I'm going to have to take you down. Morgan's just like, I, ah, you know, you don't stand a chance. That's when we learned, uh, apparently, Jordan can use his powers properly. So he uses his heat vision and he blasts them. This doesn't do anything, and George is sit, standing there in surprise. But, yeah. So then we move over to the earthquake, and the miners are actually under there, and they're actually seeing something coming. So that's when the head construction worker girl, she's just there, and... She 
she just tells him that do not get out of there, do not blow off the explosives, because apparently they have them on the wall, and yeah. That's when Doomsday finally comes out, and we get this little shot right here. Now, we don't know what he looks like, of course. Well, we kind of do. If you're a comic book reader, you know what he looks like. But anyway, he takes out most of the construction workers. He drags both of them, and it's just left with this one guy. So, the girl, you know, she's telling him not to blow it up. Do not turn on the explosives, but he does because he's scared. And the whole cave explodes. So then Morgan finally gets Jordan in a chokehold, and his uh, Jordan's grandma... She's telling him to let, telling Morgan to let him go. And Morgan is just like, no, but she convinces him. That's when John just like, oh, oh, that's when John and Lois, they finally figure out what it was. And it was under the ground. And, you know, they're just basically like, what could ever do this? You know, like, what, what big thing could ever do this? So then uh, Clark finally gets up. And Morgan actually lets Jordan go, so Clark beats the absolute shit out of this man. He gives him his super hands. And Morgan's just left there, incapacitated. His mother tells him to let it go, and Clark's just like, don't you ever touch my son again. And uh, his mom, Clark's mom, pretty much tells him what's going on. Anyway, Clark brings Morgan back, and Morgan's just like, well, you need me. Why can't I get out of here? You know, it's like... And Clark's just like, no, no, I don't need you. It was a bad idea to let you out in the first place. And Morgan's just like, whatever's coming, it's coming for you. And, you know, I won't be able to be there to protect you. You know, you know he's just doing his whole villain stuff. You know, yeah, he's just trying to get out. Yeah, so he's just like... He says some kind of Kryptonian language, like, see you soon, brother. Because he will come back to ask for his advice. Yeah, you know, he's going to come back. Of course Clark will. He's going to need him. But Clark just leaves, so. That's when we were to Hope, and Hope's actually getting pretty mad at Lois because apparently she figured out that um there was an illegal source. Well, an outside source. And Lois actually tells her that it was actually... There was no source. It wasn't really important. But apparently it was her sister, her sister Lucy. She had swallowed a chunk of pills and decided to drown herself in a bath in cold water. And Hope's just like, "Why didn't I'm your partner, you know, like, why didn't you tell me this? And Lois is just staring there. She's like, oh, well, yeah. So Hope's just like, you need to tell me these things. And Lois agrees, so. Anyway, we move over to uh, Lana and Kyle, and Lana actually comes to the conclusion that she's going to run for mayor, finally. I mean, I've been saying this since the end of season one. I, I, I know. So yeah, Kyle's just like, great, so now I can be, well, I mean, I forgot what it's, what it's called, but whatever. Anyway, we move over to Jordan and Jonathan and Jonathan finally figures out that Pete is actually on something. Steroids, probably. Yeah, steroids. So, yep. That's when Natalie comes in and uh, Jordan asks where uh, Sarah is. And Natalie tells him she she's right outside. So Jordan goes to talk to Sarah. And he asks, like, what did I do? Like, why are you mad at me? Like, is it, like what did I do? Sarah actually tells him that she actually did kiss someone at camp. It was a girl, and she didn't feel anything, well, she didn't really, like, like girls, so she's not out of the closet yet, we all knew she, we were probably saying that she had a boyfriend, but, yeah, I mean, I don't know, I, 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 I kind of think she was lesbian, just a couple, you know, in season one, I was just like, eh, you know, eh. I mean, the signs weren't there, but, I, I don't know, I just had that feeling, but anyway, yeah, she tells him that, Jordan runs away, and he's like, if it didn't mean anything, then why didn't you kiss her? And, you know, it's just like, why'd it happen? So, yeah, they're pretty much broken up. So, yeah, Jordan just stands there and, you know, he just walks right out. And Sarah just sits there. Sarah's just standing there and she's like, oh, I can't believe I did that. She cheated on him, so, yeah. Anyway, Lois and John, they start asking Clark what happened. And 
Clark, he's just, he pretty much goes down the whole sitch of what happened in the fortress, and his mom just kind of discovered what was going on. And, yeah. So, John finally figures it out. It was like, there's, there's, um, he pretty much just figures it out. Oh, yeah, it's doomsday. Well, he never said those words, but. Something like that. He's like, you know, whatever's happening, it's underground. So, you know, let's go see that and all that stuff. Anyway, we finally move over to the head constructor girl. And she, she actually is calling someone on the phone. Now, who could that be? I have no idea. I'm saying it could be Anderson. Maybe. Maybe it's Anderson. Or maybe a villain that we just haven't seen yet. But, yeah. She figured it out. Doomsday is down there, so. Whoever this is. Hmm. So, I think this episode was pretty good. Um, I really like, I'm like really sold on Anderson being the person that she called. But, you know, it could be someone else. But yeah, I think this overall this episode was great. It was great. It was, it was really good. Uh, it was a good thing that we got to see Morgan again. Or AKA Fake Zod. That was great. And I got to... You know, we got to see him get a little closure with his mother. Well, kind of. But, yeah. So, apparently, what I did not mention, I am so sorry, but uh, he was never genetically made. You know, they didn't do the, you know, they weren't banging in his mom. You know, they, you know, they weren't doing all that. Apparently, he was, you know, apparently he was bioengineered, except for Clark. He was the only Kryptonian that was genetically made. Yeah, and we finally got to see Clark's mother. That was that that was great. Yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> we got a confirmation that she was not sleeping with Morgan's dad. Yeah, so I wonder how that works. <laughs> so yeah, the only thing I did not like is probably the drama between Sarah and Jordan. I mean, I get it. It's a CW show, so I know it's gonna be drama, but I didn't really care about it this episode. And Jonathan saying, I mean, it was very small, so I can't really complain about it, and it didn't really distract from the plot, but, eh. I mean, I just wish they'd give him just a little bit to do. I'm not saying give him superpowers, which, I mean, come on, they probably will. I don't think he should get them, you know? Because if one person gets them in the family, then the other person, so then it's going to be Lois. Then it's going to be everybody in here super... Yeah, that's one of the things that ruined Flash, so I hope, hell being, you know, since he was the writer on that show, I hope he doesn't do the same thing, you know. So yeah, first reveal, Doomsday. Yes. Honestly, he kind of just looks like a short astronaut. <laughs> I mean, look at the arms and everything. Why is, he so, like, why is the arms so short? But I'm sure he's going to look better when he finally gets out. So yeah. I mean, that was pretty cool. We almost got it. So back in episode three, we will probably get the full image. Maybe. If it's not a filler episode. Who knows? And, yeah, we got to see Tag again. I wish we got to see a little more. I hope we do get to see a little more in this season. And, yeah. And John was great. I like to see him doing something. They gave him something to do. And it was amazing. Now, will he suit up again and become a Halo? <laughs> And become a Halo character. Uh, maybe. I think he probably would have fight against Doomsday. <laughs> yeah. So we know he's not going to stay in retirement. But yeah. Possibly. So yeah. That'll be it guys. Um, Thank you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, Yeah. That was Superman Lois Season 2 Episode 2. Uh, yeah. Stay tuned because I will be talking about Noami. I mean not Noami. No. Mani. Naomi. Man, that's so hard to say. <laughs> yeah. So, stay tuned. And thank you guys. Bye.